everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are talking to Tracy Dumblazer, and we're talking about her book, Conquer Your Karmic Relationship, Heal Spiritual Trauma to Open Your Heart and Restore Your Soul, which we talked a lot about. Thank you, your beautiful book. Um, mm-hmm. We talked a lot about in the lat in part one. Um, now let's talk about relationships, like, you know, our love relationships, our significant others, and you talk about twin flames and soulmates tell me what that even means and placed in this context of your karmic relationships so soulmates are spirits uh sometimes that have had previous life uh experience with one another and they have a a deep sense of familiarity Mm -hmm. um but soulmates are also people who energetically align which means Mm -hmm. they similar habits, similar experiences, similar, uh, similar energies. And when, when a soulmate comes across your path, you're going to feel it deeply in some way. You're going to already have a sense of familiarity and connection. You can have love at first sight. You can, uh, be, uh, repelled and angry and irritated in somebody's presence that's also a sign that you you have some sort of connection with them that may may have been unpleasant um but when you when you meet a soulmate uh soulmates are also uh like the 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 the, the characters that come together to leave a lasting legacy in an event or for the planet mm. Um, so we look at our spiritual lead- leaders, like this, this, uh, this Pope currently, he is leaving a deep lasting legacy in many, because he's breaking away in, in a lot of things from the church, from he, he's, he's very compassionate and he can't, he can't reconcile the beliefs of the church and their, their, uh, I don't know what to call them, their laws and compassion for humanity. Mm-hmm. And, and he's, he's bridging that gap in ways that have, that have never happened in, mm-hmm. you know, these thousands of years. So, um, you know, him and he, he is, he is one of our, our cultural soulmates. Mm. Um, so everybody has uh, relationships that, um, so let's, let's talk about soulmates. Let's say you are a person that continually attracts controlling people, mm-hmm. right? So in that case, you're going to meet a man or a woman and you're going to have this connection to them. But the connection is that energi- energetic dynamic of their desire to be um, dominant and your desire to be submissive, mm-hmm. right? So your soulmate then becomes this energetic dynamic or this relationship that you continue to attract that has multiple faces until you decide to change the relationship. Mm. Then we have what people call the twin flame. Mm -hmm. And this is a really unique thing because I've heard it, uh, everything from, you know, two souls become one in the same body. I feel uh, my my relationship and understanding to twin flames is not that we are the same soul coming together, half half a soul in one body and half another soul but that is an expression it's a way to express what it feels like to connect with another person on every level mental Mm. emotional spiritual like all all the chakras align on all levels and you're just like whoa this is amazing Mm. oftentimes those relationships also have unfinished business. And so mm-hmm. oftentimes we we might want them to be a marriage or we might want them to be a romantic relationship, but the romance aspect of it takes a back seat to what so the romance takes a back seat. That's funny. Um, <laughs> sometimes I just say things I'm like, oh, that created a whole other picture. <laughs> but that the the romantic aspect of the relationship takes a back seat to what the couple need to learn to do together to better accept each other and themselves Mm. ultimately every relationship we have is going to teach us something deeper 
and more abiding about ourself, about our spirit, about our needs, about our uh, ability to be compassionate and to love. So our twin flame is going to come to come to us on some point, but oftentimes though that relationship will need to happen uh, over a span of a lifetime or several. And it might be a marriage, but it might not. But there, there will always be a need. And, and oftentimes I find it, that those relationships come in and out. They come together for a period of time, they do some work and then they go, go out again and, and meet other people or work, live in other situations and they come back. They just that's what they do is they come back and forth so that it gives them time to process what it is they're integrating spiritually. Mm. Okay. So the um, conquering your karmic relationships as it stands in this particular case is that you have a relationship to a person that maybe you have an alignment because you've known each other in the past, or maybe it's this current life and you kind of vibrate with them in a copacetic way regardless, um, your karma and how does the karma feed into all of this? So uh, let's, I, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's easier to look at negative situations to better understand what we're talking about. But let's say somebody, uh, somebody is an abuser mm -hmm. and this person must always find a target, mm. right? They, that, that's just how that goes. And those two people come together. Now, the person who is, is the victim or the submissive, you can be a victim or you can be submissive and submissive is a choice to play a role. It's a little different. So it's, an empowered, it's an empowered position. Mm -hmm. When you are victimized in that relationship, that's gonna be a pattern that even if you get rid of your abuser, if you move away from them, if you get out of the relationship, you still have to, to work with that part of yourself that creates a space for someone to take power over you. Right, so you may marry husband number one who's an abuser, but unless you actually address your own choice of being uh, um, the submissive, you're gonna come, here comes husband number two with the same kind of karmic learning that you have. Yes, but here, I, here's the, I, I kind of, I kind of mess things up because a, a person who is, a person who is with an abuser is not necessarily submissive. They are a vic they are victimized. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they are brainwashed, gaslighted to the point at which they lose sight of themselves and their power. Mm -hmm. And in order to get out of that relationship or get into another relationship that is going to be good for them in a, in a, in a positive, fulfilling way, they're going to have to overcome, they're going to have to find what it is in them, the, the pain, the grief, the, the imprints that are putting them in a position to not take a role of power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the abuser, oftentimes abusers are, are sociopaths and, and so they don't really have a connection to em empathy. Mm -hmm. But a person who, let's say they're not a sociopath, they're not in that category, a, a, just a regular person who's an abuser they're doing that for a reason. They're being uh, intimidating and uh, abusive for a reason. And mm -hmm. all, until they're going to continue that until they decide that they need to deal with their own pain about why they are seeking to control their, their environment and others in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So that's kind of a two-sided view of what, kind, what may have been patterns of behavior in a particular person's lifetime that boom in this lifetime they're put together to help each other heal um their 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 conquer let's say their karmic relationship and heal their spiritual trauma and open their heart to restore their soul which is in fact the title of your book <laughs> we've been talking to tracy on dump laser talking about her book can you hold your beautiful book up again yes conquer your karmic relationship, heal spiritual trauma to open your heart and restore your soul. Thank you so much.